Greetings Swangolians and welcome back to Swango. This is the OG Bird and today we're going to be continuing our tanks uh, of our 101 series and go ahead and do a part two, a B version of the tanks. There are things that I feel that need to be discussed, especially with Armored Kill coming out in a few hours. I know you guys want choppers and jets. We will get to those. There's plenty of time, guys, and right now I think it's more important for you to understand the armor as best as you possibly can and, and be sure that you know armor as best as you possibly can, especially with the new armor kill update coming out. Now, like I said, there's plenty of time. There's still two more add-ons coming out for BF3. There's Aftermath coming in, De in December, and there's Endgame coming in March, and we have no idea what these are going to entail, but each time they give us a new add-on, it, it completely adds a new element to BF3. So this game's going to be going on for a while. I mean, you could be playing this for another year, honestly. A soldier and customize, and we're going to go straight into the land. And a few things that you'll notice if you have if you go into this menu on your machine, if you've downloaded the latest patch, you can see that there have been some additions to this category. So we have our main battle tank, we have tank destroyer, infantry fighting vehicle, mobile artillery, and mobile AA. You now notice that they added mobile artillery and tank destroyer to the land category. That is because those are going to be new categories for armor in the armored kill update coming out in a few hours. So again, this is why we're going over the tank one more time. So we're going to go into the customizing the tank and look at all the upgrades. Now I use proximity scan and that might change with armored kill coming out we'll see we have uh, what these do if we look at the intel the external sensors detect and reveal enemy units in your mini which is active while in any seat of the vehicle we have reactive armor now essentially what a reactive armor does it puts a re reactive armor plate on each side on each flank side of your tank and one in the rear and whenever you get hit, that plate falls off, so you don't receive any damage for the initial hit. But then if they hit you again in that wounded spot where that plate fell off, then it's just like you never had reactive armor anymore. So what it does, it just neutralizes that first hit. So if you can keep rotating your tank to drop each one of those pieces of reactive armor, those three shots are going to complete waste. Well, and, and if you can be you know, battling the other tank and, you know, forcing your cannon upon him and getting hits, you're going to win the battle. And then you can get out and you can repair your reactive armor, even though you're 100%. Now, that's when you can repair reactive armor is when your tank's at 100% and then you keep healing the side of the tank that's dropped its reactive armor. If all of them are done, then you have to do all three sides. There is none for the front. So that is reactive armor in a nutshell. Then we have thermal camel. Now, what that does is when somebody's using thermal vision, your tank doesn't show up glowing white. That's that's pretty much it. It's not very useful, but it might change in the armored kill update because now there is an AC-130 hovering above one of the objectives, and so thermal camel might actually come in handy. We'll see. Then there's maintenance. Now, this is a, this is pretty self-explanatory. You can find this on a couple of different vehicles, both land and air. And this is a preventative maintenance procedures that improve your vehicle's recovery from damage. So as long as you're not disabled, it's going to recover really fast. And then we have the auto loader, which is is on every almost every vehicle in the game. It's an enhanced mechanism, decreasing the minimum time between firing rounds in your main weapon. So that just means that reload time is shorter if you're using auto loader for your main weapon. Then we'll go down to the gadgets. Now I use the infrared smoke just because it has so many uses. For one, it prevents me from being locked on. Two, if I'm locked on to somebody who fires, if I can get my smoke off, it'll deter the rocket. Uh, three, it adds cover for me and my teammates. It, it just goes on and on. There's just so many uses for the smoke and, and that's why I use them. But uh, they if you watched the previous video, the tanks, the first part of the tanks, then you know what smoke does. Then we have zoom optics. Now, it's not really useful. It hasn't been really been useful yet. But we are getting an armor kill, which is going to have the largest map in Battlefield history. So zoom optics might actually get its day in court when this add-on comes out. 
but for now there is no real point in using it. Thermal optics can be very nice because it will show enemy tanks and enemy infantry on the ground just glowing like crazy and it really makes it for an easy target to hit when your eyes can get confused with sh shrubbery around and you know different textures around seeing it in black and white can make it very nice so if you're just starting out thermal optics might be something that you want to try and then we're gonna go down to weapon now I currently use guided shell that means that anything that's been painted I can fire it if I'm in range and it will also lock onto enemy land vehicles and I can fire upon those as well then we have the coaxial LMG it's a light machine gun mounted coaxially to your main weapon so you can switch to a light machine gun fire then we have the weapon canister shell now this is a very versatile weapon because it's great against infantry especially even from really long distances you can get sniping distances with the canister shell it's pretty accurate it's pretty deadly you can also really inflict a lot of damage on low flying and stationary aircraft it doesn't do anything to armor really but it does really good stuff to infantry it does really good stuff to low flying choppers and low flying planes if you can connect with the shot and then we have the coaxial heavy machine gun a heavy machine gun mounted coaxial to your main weapon and this is a very very powerful powerful weapon as opposed to the light machine gun which fires at a faster rate the heavy machine gun fires at a slower rate but does a massive amount of damage so if you can connect with one shot you can usually take down your enemy just boom it's a it's an it's a nice thing to have sometimes but for now the guided shell is is what I'm going to be using now since it, since we're here we can go ahead and check out some of these new things that are coming about and you can see that all this stuff is pretty much basic yeah thermal optics they actually get an extinguisher on the tank destroyer and they pretty much have all the same weapons that we do except they're going to be adding the tow missile and the cannon HE which I'm very very excited about and then we have the mobile artillery which is going to do some pretty interesting things as you can see it has pretty much all the same upgrades and gadgets except it has a proximity defense and this deploys an incendiary smoke that gives damage to players within the proximity that sounds awesome you know what it sounds like it sounds like that graffiti deterrent wall from naked gun where those uh it's awesome or that wall <laughs> the graffiti deterrent wall uh so we'll have to see what that does and then for weapons we have some pretty interesting missiles and anti-air and airburst weapons as well so we'll learn about those as armor kill comes out but for now we are going to go back to caspian so we can get a little bit more detail in the tank and i'll meet you there okay so here we are back at caspian border and we're gonna get a little bit more detail in the tank now if you remember in my last video i actually went into some detail about which exterior cannon and weapon is for which seat and so we have the main cannon for the main seat the gunner for the gunner seat and then we have this guy the tv seat little window now we're going to get in the tank and i want to talk about the visibility and your roles uh, in the tank but first i want to go over in the tv seat now the tv seat unlike the gunner seat where you're mainly going to be focusing on the rear of the tank and the sides of the tank to keep him from c4 and people laying mines right next to your tank and things like that from from infantry getting too close to the tank as well as spotting maybe other tanks coming up on your most you know defenseless spot of the tank which is the rear you want to be focusing as the tv guy as the recon guy in the tank you want to be focusing your direction on the front and the left not so much the rear at all because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be painting and spotting and if you're painting a target the target needs to be within where he is facing so that he'll know especially if you guys are not communicating so he'll know by looking you're painting a target directly in front of him he it'll just pop up in, on his HUD and he can go ahead and switch to guided missile and fire now two things will happen either he'll fire and you'll hear the his lock-on process and you can even see watch him fire and destroy the vehicle so if you start to hear him even lock on then you know he's got the guided missile and you should continue to just try to lock on to stuff always focusing your attention on the front and the left side of the tank now the reason why we why we don't look at the right side of the tank 
is because we look to the right, our view is completely covered by the gunner's seat weapon. Now, even if you rotate it, it'll, it'll help your view just a little bit, but not enough. So don't even worry about it, because if the gunner is facing that way anyways, then you have, there's no reason for you to be looking in the same spot. You can focus your attention to the rear sometimes, but mainly focus it to the left flank of the tank and the front of the tank. Now, the roles of the tank, they're, you know, the three seats of the tank. You have the driver, and the driver's objective is to be going for objectives. It is to be taking out other enemy vehicles that it is capable of. And it's also for giving ground units cover while going from objective to objective. So don't just bolt out because you're in a tank and you can go fast and leave your infantry behind because they can use your tank as cover. I mean, you've seen the movies. Look, this fire, I've got a light machine gun, RPK on right now. It's not gonna do a damn thing to this tank. Not, not one little thing to this tank. So as infantry, I'm gonna be walking alongside of this thing or running alongside it to try to keep cover from enemy fire. So don't forget that. And in the gunner seat, as I have stated before, you don't want to be focusing on the front. You want to be focusing on the rear and the two sides. Unless, of course, he's trying to bring your attention to the front. If they're, you know, but you need to be covering the tank's rear end, its most vulnerable area, as the gunner. And then we've already gone over what you're supposed to be doing in this the TV seat. Now, under s some tactics as the driver, especially using smoke, blow smoke just before exiting your tank for repairs. This gives you cover while you or your teammate can repair the tank. I mean, let's take a look. Blow, I blow the smoke, and then I can go ahead and start repairing my tank under cover of smoke. Why, why not? Why not use it? Every time you go to get out to repair, just... Just hit that right bumper and get out and then repair. Just use that smoke as much as you possibly can. And then, by no means, don't exit a dying tank. If the enemy gets it, it will have to be destroyed before it respawns in your base deployment. Take the death and guarantee that your tank will respawn in your base between 60 and 90 seconds. That's about the time it takes for a tank to respawn in a an average conquest game is 60 to 90 seconds so don't take the risk of losing your team's tank to the enemy an action like that can turn the tides of the battle against you and your team also to level up fast and unlock new tank weapons and upgrades just cap up the objectives every time you cap an objective and neutralize an objective in the tank that's giving you those tank points. Not You don't even have to get any kills with the tank. Just keep capping those objectives and you'll unlock stuff really fast. And that goes as well for the planes, which is pretty difficult to land a plane into an objective unless you have the F-35. Or the choppers, which you can also land or hover above an objective and get those points unlocked in that chopper class and start unlocking those new upgrades and weapons and gadgets. So, what you need to do as the tank, you got to practice peeking and peek shots. Now, if you don't know what that is, as an infantry, you you know, you peek around corners, right? Right? Peek around corners, maybe fire. Maybe pre-fire. You do the same thing with tanks. Peek around. Whoop. And then reverse, get out of there. Wait for that reload. All right, let's peek around again. Yeah, boom. All right, yeah, just peek. Just don't give them, don't give them much. And try to keep. Practice shooting while moving. Practice the peeking and peek shots, and keep the nose of the tank, the strongest part of the tank, pointed at the enemy cannons or rocket fire that's coming at you. You know, keep that angle. This angle is what the enemy should have a shot on. This Here's angle your right here. Pick it up. Because any shot that they do get on you is going to be minimal damage. Even the straight-on shots in the front, as you've seen, gives about 21 points of damage. But if you get that angle shot, it's going to be like 8 in the front with the RPG. And in the side, we remember it was like, what, uh, 17 or, or something like that. So those angled shots, keep this part of your tank, that angle, 
should be the enemy's only shot is is those two forward angles on your tank and your tank will last a very long time so remember to subscribe to the channel like the video share it amongst your friends and i promise guys we will be getting into the choppers and jets i know that's what you want and we will get to it but we have armored kill coming out and we I thought they really should have focused a little bit more attention onto the tank and make sure you knew absolutely everything about the tank and what each of the upgrades and weapons do. Now, some of this is all going to change when Armored Kill comes out, and so we will be going piece by piece into Armored Kill, how the gameplay works, what the new vehicles are, and maybe some of the new uh, strategies, tactics, and hotspots within each of the maps. So, again... This is DOG Bird signing out of Swango. And remember, this wouldn't be Swango without your obligatory explosion. So here it is. And remember, happy gaming. Enemy tank spotted. Over. <laughs>